So, welcome to this uh, CTTV episode uh, one. one. Let's see if we can make at least two or three of them. Uh, we will start a little bit with uh, why I'm doing why I'm doing. So, when I was young, I had a CDTV. And I thought it should be a cool machine to have. And uh, unfortunately, that wasn't really the case. And I will explain a little bit why. So, I had it for a while and then I had a friend that was interested in it and he had an Amiga 500 with a hard disk and extra memory, so we did a swap. So, now I have an Amiga 500 with a hard drive that I have had for many many years. And not long ago I found a CDTV for a good price. I felt okay. I need to give this another chance and see if it is that bad that I remember. So I bought it. And of course, with a uh, little bit of modern technology, I think we can make it uh, really good. In fact, I would probably say that we can make it at least as good as an Omega 500 or, or even better, I think, because we will have all the features of an Amiga 500 and added a CD drive to that. And also it will look really cool in black. So what is the history of the CDT and when was it introduced? So the official date is 1991, probably a little bit different years around the world. and. It was a couple of years after the Amiga 500, but it is built uh, on the Amiga 500 platform. So in theory, it is an Amiga 500 with a uh, new case uh, and some few functions uh, like CD drive that is new, but otherwise it's an Amiga 500. Uh, it comes with one megabyte of uh, memory. Unfortunately, the CD driver do take a little bit of that memory, so you don't have a complete one megabyte memory. So if you have Amiga games and try to run them that needs one megabyte, they will not start. So that is a little bit of sad. So uh, if we compare to the Atari, they came with uh, the Atari STE two years earlier. If we compare it with Nintendo, it was uh, when the uh, Super uh, Nintendo or SNES came and also the uh, uh, Mega Drive for the Sega, as we call it here in uh, Europe. This bear a little bit uh, different uh, in other countries. And the uh, Commodore line continues then with the 8192 and CD32 in 93. So if you look at the CD TV, it was meant to fit in with your hi fi equipment uh, in your stereo rack. So it is uh, black, it is quite a uh, good looking front. It does say Commodore CD TV, and you could uh, use it uh, as a uh, CD player without uh, starting any monitor or something like that because you had an control in the front and um, the remote at the top as you see that was both for uh, controlling the CD playing if you didn't uh, start any monitor but also for playing so how did that work as you see it is uh, not that ergonomic and it is uh, infrared and if you have used a TV remote with infrared you know that that is maybe not the uh, best uh, technology and maybe not that is uh, responding perfectly. So this was a little bit uh, hard to play with and uh, the controller acted also as a mouse. You have a button there to switch between mouse and joystick. There is another uh, variant of this that was, uh, this is a, on this picture, it's a touch button. Uh, on the other one is the switch. 
I think the other one was uh, a little bit easier to understand in which mode it remote was in. And for the simple task of entering a couple of numbers and such things and playing power on and power off, this was great. And for gaming, it was not that great. So if you would like to then uh, just connect an uh, joystick, what would you do? Yeah, if you look at the back of the CDTV, you will see that there is no joystick port and there's no joystick port at all on this uh, device. So that is a little bit of uh, a disappointment. I think uh, that uh, Commodore could have uh, put into regular joystick ports on this uh, machine without breaking the bank. It was really expensive and um, I think that had uh, done a lot for the value. But we have uh, one port for uh, mouse or remote as it says and one for a keyboard. So it is possible to add both mouse and keyboard and there was an adapter for the uh, mouse remote port where you could uh, plug in uh, dual joysticks. And in this video series, I will uh, mount another type of uh, adapter that has become available later years. But that is uh, something that we will need op to open this up and uh, look at it. And then we have the normal uh, port for an Amiga. We have the disk drive, the serial, the parallel, and the RGB video. The thing that uh, the CDTV had built in. It was uh, the composite video and also the RF modulator. And then we have one expansion port and we will use that in this area to add SCSI device to the CDTV. And as you see we have MIDI both in and out. And I have tried to find a really really good use for that and there are some uh, limited use that I found for certain type of uh, music CDs that could uh, produce MIDI, but uh, it is hard to find information, so it was not uh, as uh, used as in the Atari that had MIDI ports as default, because the uh, Amiga 500 didn't have any MIDI ports. So, the marketing done. If we look at uh, the marketing here in Sweden, where I live, we have this famous uh, person uh, Svulu that uh, was set out to rescue the uh, Commodore in uh, Sweden and uh, plummet the sales of the uh, CDTV so they be made a really uh, big commercial that was uh, aired on TV and uh, I think it was uh, quite good because um, this uh, was one thing that uh, made me to buy the CDTV because I really liked this uh, Svola that was a great comedian. Unfortunately, he is no longer with us, but uh, he did great things during his years. And what was the big mistake for me then? I, as I said, it was quite an expensive uh, equipment, so I didn't have that much money to buy games. But I thought, I like murder mysteries, so I will buy Sherlock Holmes. And I can say that is not the really best game as a teenager to experience. It was fun for a while, but uh, it was not uh, that type of uh, multimedia experience that I was uh, really longing for. So I did uh, add a disk drive to my CDTV and uh, try to play some uh, Amiga games with the uh, remote control, but that wasn't really good, it, it was hard to play and it was not that responsive as it needed to be. So I think we then should start to look a little bit at the uh, Sherlock Holmes games so you can uh, see what experience I did have as a uh, teenager with my CDTV. Some loading, we do see a splash screen here showing that this is a CDTV title. and. Then comes more black. And then we 
have more loading. Even though this is a city based game, the loading time was quite long as the city drive was not that fast. Even though it says solid state, it is not solid state storage, it's only solid state systems. Starch. Welcome to Conan Doyle's Hound of the Baskervilles. To take part in the murder mystery, select the top half of the screen and press button A on your remote controller. To see the instruction. And we have more loading. This is a game of pigeon because you need to wait and wait for loading and loading. And this is the main screen where all the game action is uh, started from. And uh, there are a spoiler here. There are no action in this game. So here you can choose to look at the calendar, you can choose to look at photos and notes. Uh, we will uh, start by looking a little bit at the photos. See. And then you can click at the photo and see that in a large scale after a little bit of loading. Anymore at Baskerville, 1888. It's a real multimedia title with both uh, graphic and speech. D. Which photo would you like to see? And some more loading to see that photo. Mortimer, Grimpen, June 1888. See. And then if we go uh, back to the main screen, we can choose to do another task. In this case, we will take a look at the calendar and see what happened during uh, that day. And we can browse around in the calendar also to see uh, different days. With all important dates having been ringed in red. Would you like to read these notes at your leisure? And or shall I summarize them for you? Mind if you, we if summarize them, we will get an animation and someone reading the notes. Tuesday, the 25th of September. Extraordinary to think that barely four days ago, Holmes and I had just completed our latest adventure, the problem of the shelters. Returning from our celebratory evening, we learned from Mrs. Hudson of an unexpected visitor. After an hour, he had gone, leaving his walking stick behind, but no message. On the gentleman's return, Holmes' deductions of Mortimer from the attributes of his walking stick proved correct. He was indeed an amiable, unambitious, absent-minded, dog-owning ex-medical student who now yeah, lived... Yeah, uh, we can see what happens another day. September's calendar with all important dates having been ringed in red. And we will see the same animation. Would you like to read these notes at... If we choose to listen to them, if we choose to read them, we will get them displayed. And a lot of uh, reading and reading. So, uh, for a teenager, this game was not that exciting, and uh, I think that uh, deducted some from my uh, CDTV experience. 
September's calendar with all important dates having been ringed in red. Would you like Let's to read these notes at your leisure, or again. shall I summarise them? Sunday, the 30th of September. The fresh morning cheered both myself and Sir Henry. It transpired that Barrymore could, after all, have been in London all the time, as the telegram had not been delivered into his hand, but into his son's. So let's do something more exciting. What could that be, you think? Yeah, let's go for the cup of tea or coffee. Yeah, really exciting. So, this uh, concludes most of things in this game. I can be honest and say that I didn't play that much of it. My old pipe. Better not use it now, and it's not I good for your health. Didn't really finish it. My so old pipe. Better not use it Maybe now, it's, it's not good uh, for your health. a twist if you take time and try to finish the game, but um, I didn't have the patience. Maybe I will like try that uh, later on some or time. Or shall I summarize them for you? Mind you, if I or just read a walkthrough, if that is available. If you like this game, please uh, tell me in the comments. Tuesday, the 25th of September. Extraordinary to think that barely four days ago, Holmes and I had... So, for the joystick, we will... Uh, Use this adapter that I bought on eBay, and I did look today, and the seller does not have any current listing for this. Uh, but if you contact the seller, maybe you could get them to list it again. I did buy this uh, for quite a long time ago, so the price may differ. And the adapter is quite easy, and I think you probably could. Uh, order it yourself with my and PCB on some of the uh, PCB makers. And this is uh, how it will be uh, possible in the uh, CDTV. Uh, as uh, we will see in the schematics, it's the U75 chip that we will uh, put the uh, adapter between the socket and the chip. And if you <coughs> would not like to change the uh, inside of your CDTV, there were uh, some cables uh, available for external connection of the both mouse and uh, the joystick. I haven't really seen any of those listed in a while, so I think they're quite hard to get uh, hold of. And I'm not sure if there are any schematics of how they are wired inside. Seems like it should be quite easy to build them, but uh, who knows if there are not available schematics, uh, maybe it's hard to figure out. And the uh, SCSI card and the 8 megabyte RAM board that we will add, those are bought from the same seller at eBay. And again, it was quite a long time since I bought this, so uh, the pricing may not be accurate right now. So I did look at the seller and it is still some uh, the CDTV stuff listed. Maybe not all, but uh, at least the good setup there I did see. And uh, not that many left, so if you would like to buy one, uh, be quite quick, because uh, I think they will be popular when everyone would like to build their dream machine. Okay, this, uh, Upgraded uh, CDTV.
Okay, so while we are in here, we may clean a little bit also. So, let's start with the memory. It shall be an 8 megabyte extension, so... And to keep it quite in stock, I chose to make this in the one that just slots in the port just like that That's all for part one, do not miss the next part. Subscribe to Daniel of Many Trades if you like the content.